It's a history-making day at the Indianapolis Motor Speedway, the first ever nationwide series race at IMS. Kyle Busch has been the dominant car all day and is out front now courtesy of a bit of pit strategy. Danica Patrick made her name at the Speedway, but it will not end well for her on her return trip. We are under caution right now, and that is the cause of it. Danica Patrick and Reed Sorensen. You can join our conversation in the ESPN Pit Studio via Twitter. Follow us at NASCAR ESPN. We'll share some of our thoughts. We'd like to hear some of yours as well. And speaking of thoughts, Rusty, I know that you are so impressed right now with Ty Dillon. I am very impressed with Ty Dillon, the young guy out there driving that 51 car out of Richard Childress Racing. What a great run he's having today. That's Austin's little brother, and man, I'll tell you, little brother is kind of outrunning the big brother today. Big wheel that thing. In just his second ever nationwide series race, we do have to keep our eye on, though, a couple of nationwide only drivers, the drivers who are eligible for $100,000 at the end of the day if they are the best finishing uh, driver among these four. Currently, Ricky Stenhouse Jr. sitting in the cap for Yeah, seat. I'm surprised, though. All four, all four of these guys have done really well in the last few weeks of keeping their car up inside that top 10 throughout the race. Ricky looked like he got to the wall a little bit earlier. They haven't. Uh, None of them have run as strong. Elliot Sadler hasn't been as strong as I thought he would be up to this point. But we're only halfway. We're going to see how it shakes out. Brad, one guy that surprised me is Michael Annette. Week after week, he doesn't qualify real well, but keeps driving that 43 steady. Richard Petty car Very steady. up to the front week yeah. after week. Yeah. And he's doing a great job out there. He really is. Yeah, pretty interesting. We're seeing a kind of a, a split pitch strategy. You guys yeah. have pitted early. Now the guys have pitted late. And Elliot Sadler up for that $100,000 in that second shot. So we'll have to see how the second half of this race shakes out. Yeah. Interesting that it's a split pitch strategy strategy like that absolutely 46 complete 54 to go Marty Reed all right thank you Nicole the top five got their pits stops in before the yellow came out that's Kurt Busch Brad Keselowski Denny Hamlin Ty Dillon and Joey Logano and Kurt or Kyle I should say as the uh, race leader is selected the inside we can give you an update Kurt Busch's car has been pushed behind the wall James Busher gets the free pass the pace car pulls off I think we've got you updated as we're getting ready to go back to green flag racing here at the Indianapolis Motor Speedway. gave uh, Kyle a really good push and Kyle took advantage. I was thinking that maybe Denny could come out of there in second, but Brad Kozlowski fought hard on the outside to maintain that spot. You know, Rusty was talking about how impressed with Ty Dillon he was. I have been too, but I said to Andy before the restart, he started restarting on the outside. Let's see what he does. Well, he made, made up a spot. He's yeah. up in the third. So how'd he do? Yeah, I'm more impressed. Did real fine. That 18 car, Denny Hamlin's got his hands full right now with Casey Kane. They're side by side coming down the front stretch. Oh, that's Elliot Sadler on the right side of your screen. That's that move Dale was talking about. You get two guys running side by side. That's the six of Ricky Stenhouse Jr. right behind him. The 18 of Hamlin in front of him. There's Paul Menard on the outside of the six car. Okay, now these two cars are going to be side by side. Let's see what Austin Dillon can do. He's going to get he's going to get a draft from this, but he's got really nowhere to take it. He's just going to have to push Stenhouse by. Yeah, he's just going to be able to try to make up one spot here. He doesn't want to get caught side by side with his teammate Paul Menard here. Doesn't do that. See if Paul Menard can cross back over here. At the north end of the track, down into four, on board with Austin. All these drivers were telling me too that the best shot that they've got is try to get somebody loose on the entrance to one of these corners. If they can just get them a little bit loose out of the throttle for a second, they might jump in there and steal that spot. I'll tell you what, Austin Dillon has had some kind of rookie season in that number three car. Through 18 races, he's had more top tens and more top fives than Carl Edwards, Greg Biffle, or Kyle Busch did in their rookie season. He has had an incredible season so far. You're right, Marty. All right, we mentioned the restart and the push that Denny Hamlin gave to Kyle. Let's take you back and show you exactly what we were talking about. You've seen this be kind of the deciding factor. A lot of restarts and people working together and 
basically pushing each other. See right there, he gets a push. Yeah, then he got great caught on him, but it kind of messed him up. It got him out of rhythm and actually cost him a few spots. As they come across the stripe, it is Kyle Busch, Brad Keselowski, Ty Dillon, Joey Logano, Sam Hornish Jr. is now running in fifth. And there's a nice four-car run with the 18 leading the way there. Denny Hamlin in six, Casey Kane, the two of Elliott Sadler, and Ricky Stenhouse Jr. And of course, those two are duking it out with those blue spoilers for the dash for cash, the hundred grand. Dave Burns, uh, you got an update from back in the garage area? They're not going Hey, guys. I uh, didn't realize you were going to be chatting with me here. Kurt's been working on the car since they rolled in here. They're not going to get to go back out. Uh, they, uh, Since it's, uh, you know, every once in a while racing for these guys, they're not going to get back out this afternoon. And I don't know what the problem is. We just haven't had a chance to catch up with them yet. So we'll update you at some point. All right. It's only the second finish outside the top 10 and 12 starts in 2012 for Kurt Busch this year. Well, they got the left rear wheel off. It tells me they're looking in the where the battery is. They've, they've got some kind of power issue trying to figure out where it is. I've seen that the battery actually short out, too, so no telling what this one is. Left side of your screen, that was the battle for fourth with Joey Logano just ahead of Sam Hornish Jr. They are coming down the back straight is your race leader, Kyle Busch, followed by Brad Keselowski, seven-tenths of a second behind, and young Ty Dillon doing one heck of a job here, running in third. There's the rest of your top five. We're past halfway, 49 laps to go here at Indianapolis. Back here at Indianapolis, let's check the motorsports calendar because we've got the NHRA Sonoma Nationals qualifying tonight at 7 Eastern on ESPN. And our Brickyard 400 telecast presented by Golden Corral, that's tomorrow, coverage starting at noon Eastern on ESPN. And then the NHRA Sonoma Nationals, 7 Eastern tomorrow on ESPN2. Our top five right now, Kyle Busch is running 1.4 seconds ahead of second place Brad Keselowski. And then Ty Dillon running third, Joey Logano behind him in fourth, and yellow number 12, Sam Hornish Jr. is running in fifth, five seconds behind your race leader. Let's go up to speed with Nationwide Insurance, and let's start with sixth place now, Vince. Denny Hamlin running the 18, and he's been out front today. He's led four laps, but right now the car is just too loose. In fact, that's what they've been fighting all day long. In their two previous pit stops, they've made chassis adjustments both times to try to secure his entry, and it's still not quite there. Doc? Casey Kane has moved back up in the sixth position after losing a couple of spots on that pit stop. Casey doesn't have any issues with the car. They put a piece of tape on the grill to make a minor adjustment. The four times the only issue he's got is the car just won't take off on a restart. Mike. Before the race, Elliott Sadler was asked what advantage he had because of his experience in the Cup Series here at the Brickyard. He said, I know what it takes to make my car go fast, and I know what it needs to feel like. So far, he has not been able to get that feeling. He's been fighting a very tight race car throughout the afternoon, Doc. And behind him, Ricky Stenhouse Jr. Now, Ricky has two goals today, one of which is Ross Fingway has never won a race at Indianapolis Motor Speedway. He'd like to give them their first victory. But even more importantly than that, right now, he wants to get by the car in front of him, Elliot Sadler, and win that $100,000 dash for cash bonus from Nationwide. He's a little bit free on entry. Vince. And in 10th place is Austin Dillon, second in the points championship. The car was too loose early in the race to hustle it, and they snugged it up, and it's a little bit too tight now. He says he's not able to drive off of it the way he wants, as you see him on the hunt there, trying to get up to the 33. And Vince Pominar not unhappy with his race car right now. Just a little bit of a shuffling there on the restart. Don't forget, this is a guy with a Brickyard trophy. Says he's placed it in his house between the kitchen and the bedroom. He passes it every day, and he wants to be able to put another one in there so he can have the same daily memory of his uh, win here at the Brickyard. Vince? And then you've got the 11 of Brian Scott. Not too bad right now. Pretty balanced. He likes his race car. Says he still needs a little bit more. The right rear gets a little edgy in traffic. Mike? Mike Lynette has been rather quiet on the radio most of the race, saying the car is neutral. Other than that, really no complaints about his car, although it has been a rather mediocre day for the 43. They were expecting much more this afternoon, Vince. 
And looking at the 99 of Travis Pastrana, certainly got a lot of fans here in Indianapolis watching him. They've been battling the car. It was tight off in the early runs. Now he says it starts off too tight on the run. So they've given him an air pressure adjustment, trying to get him a little bit more comfortable early in the stint. Marty? All right, thank you very much, team. As uh, we can also tell you right now, we've knocked down 58 of the 100 laps, and we have a total now of uh, from 32nd on down is either off or out of this race. But boy, nothing wrong with that 54 car of Kyle Busch. He is 2.2 seconds ahead of Brad Keselowski here at Indianapolis. Here at Indianapolis, it's been a bad day for some, including Danica Patrick and the 98 of Reed Sorensen. Danica gets into the back of the 98 and then gets collected. Second for you. Watch the contact. Watch what it does to her helmet. There. She was okay. We talked to her. Pretty soon we'll talk to Reed Sorensen. Kurt Busch got a break after this mishap on pit road. Looked like it was going to work out well. They get him back out on track, but then they lose power. It ended up being an electrical issue with the battery that they were not able to get repaired quickly enough. It was on the wrong side of the car. It was the start of the race, and this is the kind of day it's been for Kyle Busch. Everything has gone right for him, as he has been the man leading the most laps. He's led 50 of them so far. Put a little block on Casey Kane there, and then had the front in the engine able to come around and get around the 22. And as we come back here, the caution has just fly, flown with 37 laps to go. And here we go, guys. It's right on the outside of the window. And there's the debris on the track. Isn't it always the way it works out? Yeah, for some it is. I don't, I think what we're hearing for Kyle Busch, he, I mean, he's going to pit now, I believe. Yeah, but, but I don't think he can get this far. Yeah, they were saying they wanted to go to lap 70. And we're about seven laps short right now. So race leader Kyle Busch. You know, I make it. I uh, heard that. That was Mike Dean's voice. The crew chief on Kyle Busch is hit four. Cannot make it. Now the question will be is, can anybody else? I think that 22 might. I, I think the Dodgers have been through. getting uh, pretty good yeah. fuel mileage this year. But we're about to find out as everybody's up on the wall. And it is the way it always works out. You <laughs> sit on that box and think, okay, if we just make it to this lap, if we can just make it to that, that lap, and it falls right outside of what you can do. Pace car brings him around, and Kyle Busch, as the race leader, we mentioned he, he's led 50 of the laps so far. We've had five different leaders, seven lead changes, this being our third caution of the day. And you can see that everybody up front is following Kyle, as it'll be. Now the question is, do you do two tires, or do you go four? You want to keep track position. Yeah, but I'd like to have four tires. Yeah, you got it. Well, they're going to have to put a lot of fuel in, too, so they're going to have to sit there for a while. Might as well get the four tires. All right, let's send it to Vince. Same problem for Denny Hamlin. It's two free in. They're going to take a big swing at it with a wedge adjustment. Four tires. He's going to be short on fuel. He'll have to save. Mike? Ty Dillon saying the car was getting three as the run went on. Gil Martin debated taking two tires and then made the late decision to go with four. Doc? Brad Keselowski, four tires, fuel air, both front tires, and tape to the grill. He will make it to the white flag, maybe to the checkered. Kyle Busch, four tires, adjustment with air pressure. Kyle Busch is four laps short on fuel. And they also had a slow stop. Problems. Yeah, they were slow on the stop, Doc. And boy, look at this. Michael Annette taking two, picks up 11. And eight Kyle loses spots. eight. Eight spots. That is not what they needed right now. Which means he can't. Oh, and who lost a tire down there? Let's go That's back. A new tire. Somebody but knocked that out of a tire carrier's hand. Let's go back and see if we can show you exactly what happened. Let's get to talk about. We're here at hit road here. Came off the 70 car at Joanna Long. Came in 16th and whoa. Yeah, and it does catch Austin's car, but I don't think it looked like it did much damage at all. No, I think he's okay. No, unfortunately, it didn't jump back over there. Reward, reward, reward. Watch your speed. This okay, is a very good, narrow good, pit good, road. 40, 40, 40, it's 40, long, 40, but 40. narrow. 
That'll get your attention for sure. We'll reset everything. Looking at the car. Doesn't look like it's hurt at all. Austin Dillon still running.